Mr. Witness, we want to thank you so much for coming and positively responding to our citation. We regret that you have to wait up to this time, and we are also pleased that you are prepared to continue with us, even though time is fast spent. Uh, the process, as you have witnessed, is intended for us as Liberians to find common ground, to understand the conflict of the past and see how we can resolve our conflicts and promote reconciliation. That is why the TRC decided that the best way to do this is through ourselves as individual Liberians who had a part to play, who were victims, who witnessed things happening. And from the profile we have of you, you were very active during the period 1990 up to 2003, holding several positions which we read out to you and hopefully you may confirm or correct us where we go wrong. Before I proceed further, I'd like to ask whether you have any prepared statement, text, or statement you want to make to the commission. You want to make a statement to the commission? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I will now introduce the commissioners. Following that, you make the statement and then we'll go through what we have. Commissioner Sheikh Kafuma Konen, sit at the extreme right. Mm -hmm. What happened? Commissioner Per Brambu, Commissioner Umu Sila, Commissioner Dede Dorope, then myself here as chairman, Commissioner John Stewart just walk out. Again, we say welcome, thank you. If you have a statement to make, you can proceed now. <coughs> okay, thank you. <coughs> I first of all want to uh, introduce myself but uh, as you go I will be able to give up my other position. I am a special forces of the deformed NPFL. One of those that entered the country with Charles Taylor. I, I want to give you <coughs> the root causes of my uh, taking arm against a dual regime. I'm a citizen of Nima County. After the so-called <coughs> revolution of Samuel K. Do uh, in 1980, that was staged by a 17 enlisted men in the army None of us know where these men grew themselves from. They were the best friends. People called them in this country uh, a native man's son that had taken power. But uh, as time go, because of their seeming uh, education, they could not uh, able to maintain their revolution. And break apart, but the other people uh, fairly wait. After the November 12, 1985, a Baptist coup led by Thomas G. Fuyungpa, General of the AFL, from the Gil Travel, uh, what they call, uh, Gil Travel Men from Nima County. Nima County were perceived by Doe as its enemy county. <clears throat> and was seriously harassed, most especially in the geo ethnic territory. There was no state of emergency in Liberia at the time, but it was indirectly imposed in Nima County. And uh, <clears throat> this state of emergency was implemented through a co martial law. All of you are sitting there, know whether we have a co martial law. It is a law that is implemented in the military area, in the military control area. In fact, besides the cities in Nima County, which had two gates on each, uh, by AFL, 
The town for alongside La Biva Côte d'Ivoire border to be specific, Berdoule, Berdega district. And their play, Zoga district were all mounted with gates and the cold matter law was implemented in those areas, leaving the people living under a complete fear. No young able body moved freely in those, in those towns. Younger guys were the wife, were the wife of the AFL, whether married or not, they didn't regard. Uh, in, uh, in another area, the determined soldiers in Butu. The determined soldiers in Butu, Zoga County District, commanded by one Colonel Dobo, made a border town, blown to near Butu, considering the citizens of the town to have been preparing a border proof for the rebel in 1986. Whether there was such need in La Pruvel, nobody knows. Only they alone can answer that. <clears throat> Leaving Blonto deserted for about one or two months. Nobody was in that town. That not a big town on the border. Another harassment was raiding of a, a cultural group, cultural dancer group called Zupo. Uh, in so Vayengli town, Berege district, about 11, what do you call, uh, 1 15 a.m. in November 1989, to be specific, or not exactly, November 18, 1989, by uh, AFL 2 squad plus, led by co the company commander in Nima County, Captain Nyonswa. Men and citizens got wounded and 12 persons was arrested that that night they were brought to Banga Bon County and they spent five days in jail before sending them in Monrovia. They spent five days in jail with the with the club the same clothes that they arrested them in. Harassment which all cannot be stated here was the cause of some of us Today, to attack arm against those redeemed, to free our kinsmen. Therefore, seeing Mr. Taylor at the time appear as seeing Jesus Christ, our Savior, I, one of the great leaders in Africa, in West Africa, Amos Sipi to say, a starving, a quote, quote unquote, a starving child does not stop to ask for which the bread comes from. In fact, it has been you that's sitting. For such men to come across you, you are going to uh, join him. That's the only means of coming to our land. After our sisters, auntie, and daughters been raped by the AFL, that even the younger people were not seen, younger men were not seen to move freely. We had to join him to be brought by home. After that, we were recruited in La Côte d'Ivoire and taken to Olivia. We were trained for one and a half years. And, be, and uh, we were brought back to West Africa. But for the safety of our country, a buck of oil was taken to uh, Guinea. But if we are attacked in any part of Liberia, we have Nima, we have uh, went through Nima County to be uh, to for Nima to be secure. Uh, what happened? Of course, terrible thing happened during the war. But they were going to, they were going to uh, completely. Uh, he lived in the all in the environment that uh, those soldiers were going to see at the time. So we make our way to pass through Nima. And the revolution was launched in Mutu. To be specific, December 24th. 
that was listening for lunch. And I, I, the revolution began the popular uprising because of the, uh, the suffering the people were going through. We received a severe uh, uh, embracement. We were embraced. So as, as a result, we decided to, uh, younger brothers and sisters, evil brothers and sisters decided to run to our base that we opened. And uh, we were able to continue with the revolution. When we established my first position, I told you earlier I'm going to come in in subsequent uh, announcement of my position. Uh, my first position in NPFL was a deputy commander of fee artillery. Mind you, we had, uh, as we dressed ahead, we had two uh, group of artillery. We had fee artillery, and then we had advanced artillery. I was the first executive officer, which is deputy commander of, of fee artillery. From 1990 up to 1990 in December, I was, I, I went in a position of a uh, field artillery commander. And uh, this unit was completely controlled by me up to the uh, disarmament in 1996. <clears throat> right after 1996, or right after the, uh, the uh, election, the first position here <coughs> in this country, I was appointed as the assistant director of uh, Special Security Service for Intelligence, position that I had for only four months. I was changed sent to uh, assistant director for, op for special operations to train the long arm unit of our SSS. I first of all train the first bag of our S SSU. Train the, the first bag of our SS, uh, what do you call it? S SSU. And right after that, when SS, the first bag came out with their command structure, I had problem with their, their command. I later resigned the post for still with me as director of our portfolio. I have no assignment now. So I this is the position I had up to 2003. 2003 I was appointed as managing director of National Port Authority. Area that I occupied for only three months. I after that, I, the transitional period came in. But uh, I <clears throat> want to clarify some issue here. I know there have been a group of people coming here. I know I, you people have the, uh, the document before you're there. But before I can go through questions, I want to clarify an issue. Uh, issues on uh, join your men and other Bay issue. As stated here earlier, we entered this country to save our kinsmen. And uh, a lot of people during war, there are people who were saved by us. In fact, my, my, my recent winner is uh, Moses Zé Bla. Moses Zé Bla, uh, uh, on a house arrest, was in my own bathroom. But uh, when Moses Zé Bla, was taken to my house when I prevailed on Director Benjamin Yeten for Moses Bla, Moses Zé Bla to be taken to my house because the leader was so vexed and ordered him for him to be taken to a prison. I prevailed on him that you know, he doing that because of vexation. Let us keep him at my house and see how vexed uh, a vexation will cool. Moses slept at my house. The next morning, I, 
I was sitting with my little sister and one of my friends by the name of Peter Sider. I read before my heart on a post. A friend of mine that was doing a course or courses with me at the University of Liberia by the name of Leonard Gibson at now in the city came with one rare car and a parking car right before my friend. The car down, he came in with three ladies, introduced them. So what happened, he said, these the ladies, a uh, horseman was called, introduced one of them to be a Azebay wife, one to be a Benjamin wife, and one to be one of them sister. He said, um, he said, Benjamin, you didn't call their husbands last night, and seen last night, they had not seen them. I uh, we we went directly to the main fan, to the program guys, but they say he's still sleeping. So I said, if so, then uh, you don't wait small for about an hour, then you'll come back. Maybe I will assist you so I can see him. And they left. They left because of a very important somebody was in my in my house. I decided not to go anywhere that whole day. I don't want anybody to come behind me and um, started threatening the white brother or making some other remark or even forgotten behind him and behind me. So I decided to remain whole day at home. I didn't see that again. Black was at my house for 13 days. One day they called me that uh, there is nearby meeting at the executive mansion. I should take him there. He got in a jeep and drove to the jeep and, and I drove my small car behind him went to the mansion. After the Nima meeting, he was asked to go to a home that he free. So he asked me that uh, for what I did to him, I should escort him to a house. But before the leader could get out of the, uh, the conference room, he told me, go tell Benjamin Yaten to free the others that was in jail with a uh, black issue. Okay. So we left. We have scotted Bly at his house. We have scotted him. Oh, the dancing in the yard was too much. In fact, before I left the Palau Hall, I told him that I'm going to deliver the message that uh, Fernandela gave to give it to uh, Ethan. He said, okay. When I got out, crowd came on me with dancing. Dancing, with some putting lapa and et cetera, et cetera. I stopped them, I told them, that uh, you are are going to deliver a message. There are some other people in jail in collaboration with uh, black issues. I'm going to inform a director of SSL to have them released. Or oh, people, they left. I went. But surprisingly to me, there are people who've been before the uh, TRC here. Sir, so I, when they got to my house at that morning, they saw their late husband or their missing husband phone with me. I have my phone. Because of that, the phone is very old, but it's been kept. So in case of anything tomorrow, we will be able to present it. In fact, before that, I had the, the photograph of the phone before the incident. When I was graduating at the University of Liberia, I had a photograph with me. And everything kept, so it can be presented here. And uh, I, there was some question here today, I said I've been here seeing. There were some questions here today. There are some other people who came here and make a floating statement. I think it left with the commissioner to uh, ask if we say that uh, a Nibayan, though Nibayan Ada, a Nima citizen are responsible, they could be able to identify who are those that are responsible. This is the area to say the fact. Who are those that are responsible for death? We don't conclude. Some of us left the country when we were mature. We were mature. And we came to save our people. Those they came to say we cannot kill them. So I uh, and uh, <clears throat> I I mainly came to TLC. I the suffering that we went through in Nima County. Me personally, before I could even get out of here, after going through what I just read. My wife and myself were, was arrested by one John Pokor, one Master Sai John Pokor, 
I sign with go to a detachment a unit I go to. And uh, John Pokoy, he was a med med medical practitioner attached with the unit. Arrested us when we were coming from the farm in my home, my, own, my hometown, Dimple. Arrested us, put low on my hair, say my wife was fine, you want to sleep with a woman. But God could save us that you were not able to do anything with my mom again. So right after that, I told my wife, go, see you from a little bit farther, you're not from near the brother, you leave. Today, I had no other alternative but to cross and go to La Côte d'Ivoire, which I did. But uh, during the operation, during the process of uh, saving our people from the border, there was some portion here today, people said the uh, country was normal, I don't know what time they were speaking of. But why were normal in Morovia, or why were normal in some other country, Nima went to some other province. But during the process of freeing our, of freeing our people, there were a lot of life and property, life destroyed, and life that uh, uh, was missing and property destroyed. So I'm not big, or even the people that were used by us, people that were considered as a fighter, even from our side, some lost their life. And uh, even the enemy that we fought, we are all like women. I want to uh, personally uh, tell the people this morning in a uh, public manner that I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, it is a war that uh, caused them to lose their poverty, caused them to lose their life. In fact, even the group that came, if we compare now, those that entered the soil, those living now, they are in minority than those that lost their life. So it is war. I want to uh, use it public manner to say I'm sorry for those that lost their life, those that lost their family, and those that lost their property. Or equally so, or vice versa. And uh, <clears throat> we, we want to, uh, I want to, uh, use this time to uh, anyway I rest uh, Mr. Commissioner I rest to, uh, to await your questions Witness, we want to thank you very much yes. for coming and making that statement to the commission. Uh, you have in your brief statement described the different positions you occupied. Which As a commissioner, you have to hold your mic a little bit closer so I can hear you. Please. In your presentation, you outlined the different positions you held yes. in the MPFL and the SSS. Yes. And it is against that background that we thought it would be very useful to our process to invite you and ask you some questions. And now that you have done this presentation, commissioners will ask you some questions. But we just ask. Um, you were assistant director for SSS in two different capacities. Yes. 
Who was your immediate boss at that time? <clears throat> well, I, SSS is, uh, it is a complete administrative structure. When you are assistant director for intelligence, you, uh, we, my immediate boss was Benjamin Yitin, but uh, he had a structure. When you are assistant director of uh, intelligence, you report to the deputy director for administration. Under the structure, you reported to the deputy director. Yeah. That was structure, yes. but in operations. But the, yeah, the, the, the whole SSS is headed by a director, which was Benjamin Yitin at the time. And he was also called 50-50. Yeah, 50. That's the, uh, and he we was all had, I was probably, uh, what do you call it, 58. Okay. We had 50, 51, 52, all the way to 58, 59. But he was your immediate boss. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember Kofi Zah? Remember what? Kofi Zah. Kofi? Kofi Zah. Kofi Zah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I remember what him. Kofi Zah. What was the nature of your relationship with him, if at all? Yeah, Kofi Zak <clears throat> was one of those that were harassing when uh, when enemy uh, enter in uh, Greenville, when LPC enter Greenville, and uh, when uh, the uh, rebel commander, the, uh, the rebel chief, Taylor lost his, uh, his brother, a big brother. Kofi Zak block all units that go in there, black men at uh, Yabastan. And, uh, and the order me to go and have him arrested. And when I arrested him, took him to Banga, he was in jail. Of course, there was serious change of bullet. I lost somebody, and he took a wounded, took him to Banga. And uh, later, he told that uh, he had certain quantities of gold there. So when we left, they, they called me to uh, escort him. At this time, I, I had my mine whole brigade at uh, Compound 3. Uh, during this time, I was not able to use Compound 3. I used a uh, Tapetan route to get to Borogui. Because Compound 3 route, there was no car road. When we got to Borogui, could be escaped from me in that night, uh, run about three something. And uh, when I reported it, well, I left my car with my uh, long ring radio. The leader told me to, uh, to get coffee until I got out of that bush, which I spent three months and three weeks in the bush. Yeah. And which I failed uh, not to see him uh, because I don't know. The bush. Okay. You mentioned that a witness came and said they identified their husband. But they were? You said witnesses came before this commission and said they saw you with their husband's cell phone yeah. and watch. Mm -hmm. Not watch. Cell phone. Okay, okay, but you can come away. What? Maybe you've been hearing that. In your statement, mm -hmm. you said you have your own cell phone. Yes. But you didn't deny having the cell phones in question that it referred to. Yes. The, 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 the letter is completely lying. Uh, that was a complete false story. I, at the time, I was working with government. And uh, I don't think I'm going to be necessary for me, somebody that is arrested for me to maintain their phone. And uh, in fact, I only got to know that morning when my friend brought them to my house that uh, their husband was arrested. I had fun. So in other words, immediately that morning, I was able to buy a phone. I was able to take a phone that particular night. I had the phone. And the phone is still in my possession as I'm speaking. Okay, you were giving a message for Benjamin Yetin after Moses Bla was released with respect to the release of the other prisoners. Yes. Who gave you the message? 
the president. President who, Taylor at the time. And who were the other prisoners in question? Where I ran a Cooper, the managing director of RI was in jail. One George Manso was in jail. James Glasgow was in jail. And some other people was in jail. Those that could remember and they, they put them out that very day after he received my message. Was John Yomi in jail? Well, I don't know. This is what I'm saying that that message got to me that morning. But what the president told me, he did not count me that go tell them to have them released. Go tell them to, to release the others that are in jail in connection with black issues. Did you deliver the message to? Yes. I delivered it within about 30, 35 minutes. And he told you to release everybody? Yes. Told him and told me, go tell him to release the others that in jail in connection with black, black issues. So do you have any information, knowledge about the arrest of uh, yeah, right, John right Yomi? <coughs> yeah. John Yomi and V? Right after I, the other people came out, we decided to hear a funny story that they were also arrested. In fact, I, when uh, John Yomi brought uh, I, the former superintendent of Nima County came to, uh, to inquire what happened to, to them. He said he wanted to see Taylor and make way. Because man said we're a little bit upset of uh, what happened. What the story that we're hearing that they were in jail, they can't come out. And make way for Harrison Conway Harrison. to see the president. So you can uh, ask. I said I made way for him to see the, the well, leader of the county. to see the president. Yeah. So you are saying you have no information, no knowledge? Obviously, obviously. I, I had no knowledge that night of the gentleman arrest. But if, way, if, if, I have, if I had known then the same way that I had used, the same method that I used for blood to be, uh, to blood to survive under my, uh, my, my, the risk that I took that uh, Black survived on my, uh, my, 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 my Was there an arrest order for Black? Eh? Was there an order to arrest Black? Yes, yeah, it was an order for, for Black to be arrested and be taken to jail. And you circumvented the order by putting him under your protective custody? Yes, uh, I, as I told you, I was assistant director and I was on the scene. When the, there were a lot of cabinet ministers or uh, some other personality there when they ordered him for director to take him from there. And uh, obviously, in uh, for security, your boss can arrest somebody, taking the person along, then you'll be me standing. So while going along with him out, I decided to uh, talk to him, let her take him to my house. Let us take him in my house, and I took five or right behind the house. Let us take him to my house. So uh, he can be taken to jail. This is my friend. And I uh, go up to work it or you listen to me. We're talking to my house. Benjamin, you didn't listen to you. Eh? Benjamin, you didn't listen to you and agree for you to take the vice president to your yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, you listen to me. You listen to me. You listen to me. So when the order was issued for his arrest along other persons, was. The name of John Yomi and V also included in that order. Come here again. You said cabinet ministers, everybody was around. There was some cabinet ministers. When the minister. order of arrest yes. was issued. And then Benjamin Yetin took the vice president out and you asked him to take to custody house. of the vice president. Yes. Right after taking him to my house, I was not in the meeting again because I had a very important uh, figure in my house, so I did not go back in the meeting there again. I decided to uh, save that him. My, my question now, when the order of arrest was issued, was the name John Yomi and Isaac V mentioned among no, those no, no, who should no. be arrested? No, 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 no. The arrest of Black came this way. We all were there. And when Taylor came, he asked his SSA director to call Black. Where is the vice president? Is he here? 
All of what they know, we thought that you were going to break all of what happened in Ghana. That was the very day he came from Ghana. So they called Black. And when he came, uh, there was one or two questions he asked. Are you aware of an American talking to you today? And Black said, yes. What did they tell you? Black was trying to explain. He, he was a little bit vexed. He told Ben, look, Ben, that one, somebody to lie to me, take a man to jail. Arrest a man and take him to jail. And all of us walked out. So it was not an issue that people explained to call name and this and that. No. The only name that Black called there was Oscar Cooper. Uh, Oscar Cooper. No, not Oscar Cooper now. Uh, uh, the man from RIA, uh, Ronald Cooper. Black said when he, when he contacted him, he told Ronald Cooper. And when I took over, told, told, them that, uh, told him that I want to call you again, uh, don't answer all you might insult them. So I want Black said. And Peter said, You were lying. If you take him out of there on arrest. And all of us left. So I did not go back there again to, to see who all names came in for arrest. So up to today, um, you have no idea how the. Completely, I have no idea. I no idea. But is it your information as much as it is ours that you were arrested by Benjamin Yetin? Come in. Is it your information that Isaac V and John Yomi were arrested by Benjamin Yetin? Well, I, I cannot tell. I said this is a rumor that was going on when uh, Yomi's brother came to me that he wanted to inquire from the president and I had to take him there. I, I cannot tell. And in fact, when I asked, when I gave a message to uh, Benjamin, that uh, the president says you release the order. It's in our security view that uh, you cannot create authority. I don't have to go by again and say why they say you did that in order to not, uh, I don't know whether he arrested or not, so I cannot ask that question. So even after the ladies came and complained, and Superintendent Kamwe came also on the same issue. M Mr. Commissioner, you, 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 you're talking a little bit low. I need to get all your necessary questions before I can answer, please. I was saying, even after the ladies came and complained or inquired about their husbands. Yeah. And Superintendent Kan Kanwe came also, you met him. He told you his mission and you gave him access to see the president. Since that time, you haven't acquired any information on who arrested those gentlemen, why they were arrested, whether they died, how they died, in your capacity as assistant director of the SSS. Your immediate boss was Benjamin Yetin, and one of the original <laughs> Special Forces Commander of the Revolution. Yes. I, let, let, let me clarify thing. I A Special Forces Commander was then a uh, defunct MPFL. It was not uh, a so state as no more in a government, in a uh, I recognize state that. government. Yeah. One fight. And uh, what I was told to do. I did that. They are all my Nibayan citizens that we're talking about. The only thing that I can do is for their brother to meet up with the proper authority, which I did, by making way for whosoever that was making way. In fact, when old ladies came in my yard, none of them was, uh, was able to talk. Only the men, my friend that brought them, was able to ask a question. Okay? But they, they, they were able to explain to me that. Uh, these people were called by Benjamin Yeten last night. And up to now, they are not seeing a husband. Which I said, okay, then they can come back, and then here I wake up, we'll be able to see him. But uh, the only effort that I can make is for me not to hurt the director of SSS to be in problem with him, is to make way that uh, he see, uh, what they call whosoever responsible for the people, see the, 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 the higher authority which is still at the time, and the day. But I can go and start inquiring. They have people directly now that were doing it. In fact, the Nimbayan, some other uh, legislative cover were also every day to the house to find out from them. So the only thing we can do is find me that they see proper authority. I cannot carry him to say, I'm going to ask him. So you didn't even ask? No. Benjamin Yetin that? No, no, no. But when it came to the arrest, of the vice president, on direct orders from the president, yeah. you could ask Benjamin Yetin to take custody of yeah. the vice president. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. Shake. Thank you, Mr. Witness. In your, in your testimony, you make comment on the questions which are asked about the arrest, detention, and killing of prominent NIMBA citizens. What you did from Mose Black if other Nimbians who went to arrest these prominent citizens were to do the same thing, don't you think that would be saving of lives? As how most of their life was saved? All right, Mr. Commissioner, come here again. You said you people went to arrest Mose Bly. And you suggested to Benjamin Yutan that instead of taking uh, Mose Bly to jail, can you allow me to take it to my house? Yes. What you did for Mose Bly, if other Limbians who were sent to arrest those prominent citizens were to do what you did, don't you think it could have saved the life of these people? Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, I said earlier, my weak way to uh, save Moses Blair is other was to uh, reach me. I want to pray to my God and we want to use a mentor to, uh, to have them safe. But uh, as I said earlier, those figures, those important friends, I was not able to, uh, to even whether there was a rest for them or not. I was nowhere around when I was already at my house protecting the, uh, the vibrant. You said you know Kofi Zai. Yes and you were sent to have him arrested. Yes. Kofi Zai said that you took a broken bottle. I took what? Broken bottle. You broke a bottle uh -huh. and stabbed his wife with the broken bottle. Where and was he at the time? Well, you said you want to no, he said Kofi said I took a breaking battle to yeah. stab his wife. Yeah. Where was the Kofi man at the time? And when I, I searched for him for three months and three weeks, he was not around. It was it's false. Listen, when uh, let me clarify thing. When uh, when I was ordered again that uh, Tera told me if you can't find Kofi, don't come to Banga. They had a very important man in the group we stand at the time by the name of uh, Ato Kanga. He was a man that was responsible for making a, a border protection. He had a very good unit, good size of unit in Abu because when I was taking Kofi, I only went with five men, five armen. So what I did, I contacted uh, uh, Ato Kanga to go with me because Ato Kanga, Kofi, and all were tried to them to go with me and arrest Kofi for me to, uh, to bring him. And uh, Ato Kanga were using most of the battle zone to guard him. And when I know they were making fun out of me, this is what I withdraw and came back to Borovi. There, where I was, they sent for me. So for Kofi to say, to see here whether uh, a, a wife was starved with a black battle is false, completely false, misleading. Were you ever mandated or instructed to have? General Sam Bukhari arrested at any time? Yes, I uh, <clears throat> came this way. Yeah. I, as I stated my previous position today, but right after I disarmed 1996, 
I was not nowhere on the uh, active front. Uh, when a tailor called me one evening that the same burglary had been spotted in a border town near Butu, there where I from, there where I came from. So go assist Benjamin Yeten to arrest him, he's a wanted man. Uh, but they say he had a huge number of armed men. So I left uh, in Monrovia in the night with my paper with two persons, two of my uh, police. Went through all the night when we got to uh, bound, it was already daytime. Approaching bound in uh, a town called Deeply. We saw Benjamin Yeten and the other people in a convoy coming with St. Bogarry's body. The St. Bogarry was already killed, the body was coming. So all of us had to turn around. We brought it by it, delivered it to Moses Zebla in Sakaki. Now how I know about the same issue. Where was Sam Bokari when you were asked to assist? They, they told me that he had been spotted at the uh, border. He received a call that the same Bokari had been spotted at the border. Where I came from, Cote d'Ivoire. He was in the library and put the Bible on the Sesto River there. Did you lead a group of SSU officers to the Episcopal Church where there were some crime tribes? Come by again, come by again. On the 18th of September, mm -hmm. did you remember leading group of SSU officers to Episcopal Church where some crime people were taking refuge? And if so, what happened there? Okay, I'm a man that believes in documentation. That's the only war that I was not in the country. I left Monrovia on the 22nd of August, 1998. I went to France. And I came from France in October 21st. I have a document, the diplomatic passport that traveled away. It's still in my possession. My uh, exit visa is there. My entrance visa is there. So uh, I was not here during the September 18 war. Were you ever instructed to partake in the incursion in Ivory Coast and if so, by whom and how it was done? No. No. I had no idea on Cote d'Ivoire War. You never went to Ivory Coast? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. I'm a girl. They are voting those from the border. They are Yakuba. And, uh, I don't think, and uh, in fact, most of my family here from that side fall right within the border. I never participated. I had uh, been during the time I was doing my last rough at the University of Liberia and doing Cote d'Ivoire War. I graduated from the University of Liberia in uh, 2003, May 28th. Is it true that during your search for Kofi Zai, uh, you burned several towns and villages in Riverside? <clears throat> this is why I continue to call an important man that is still living by now in that area. Why must I burn town? No. I, I said I was in there with a very important man, whether from Burugui or from somewhere around Burugui, the one uh, at Tokanga, and he's still living. I did not. I did not. My three weeks, three months and three weeks in the bush, I did not. If somebody tell me I was feeding myself with their goat and be some right to eat because I had no means of surviving there, I, I, I will agree with them. But I did not bring time. Point town, then then I see COVID. 
Is it true that uh, you were among the first group that entered from the Ivory Coast to Barclay uh, in 1990 with three other MPFL fighters? No, I did not enter Barclay for the first time, no. I I was one of those that were despite to fight in the city after we failed and uh, having to uh, know that uh, our men are already attacked Butuo, we found our way from Monrovia here back to Butuo. You said that when you entered, I mean when NPFL entered, uh, you people were embraced by the, the citizens. The popular citizens of Nima County. Yeah, the popular citizens of Nima County. Yeah. Do you remember of recruiting someone known as Zoe John Tia, and Joe Toa that were taken to Tabu Fala, yellow, in parentheses, no, yellow No, please make that, 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 that question clear. Because you call him my name over again there. Please make that question clear, let me hear. Zuki, Zuki, John Tia, mm -hmm. and Joe Tua. Kula. Tua, Tua. Mm -hmm. You That's remember taking them? Taking them? Yeah, to the tra training base. So where is one of my colleagues, Lewa John Tia, and I'm Joe Toa. How can I take myself somewhere else? Zobwe. Okay, but three of you ever entered uh, a ball plate and then do carry out some recruitment? My dear, <coughs> entering ball plate was a process. NPFL was in Liberia for more than three, four months before going to ball play to open base. And people first area open base was in Tia play. At that time, the both team were together. The Prince Johnson and the other rest were together. But uh, when the uh, team broke up, uh, I did I had to call the rest that left Prince Johnson to go to ball play. And at, at this time, it was somewhere around uh, either March or April. Oh, this is March. So entering ball play was a process. It was not just from Cote d'Ivoire go to ball play right away. How many days Moses Blair spent at your house? 13 days. 13 days. 13 days. If I'm not mistaken. Was Mr. Taylor aware that he was not taken to jail, but rather was taken to your house? Exactly. Right after, I think, a few hours. It was brief that he had been taken to my house. It was not something hidden for him. We were not doing it for dancing. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Witness, I'm Commissioner Pearl Brown Boo. I want to say thank you very much for coming. And those who out there whose name have been involved, person of interest. They can see why it's good to come. Because probably that's why this person wrote that song, So So Spider Story, Story, Spider Spider Story. Because we can see that certain things true and certain things will lie. And if we, you don't come, let the people come. Let us ask you these things that other people have said. We have 18,000 plus. In fact, they're going to put 20, almost 20,000 statements. So, people, for their own reasons, not, we come and say things. When we say it, they're not us in it. I mean, we didn't make it up. That some of your own people from the different countries say these things. But when you come, you hear it, you can give a reason. And the first thing to start, you see, they put you to September 18. Now, I'm glad you came. 
Because he had not come, say, September 18th, the Nima man went in the Episcopal Church and killed Crown people. Who asked you respectfully request that you kindly make photocopy of your passport. Yeah, you make your photocopy for the original, you bring it for us to see, yeah. but we can authenticate it because for the future you might need it. But you bring your original alone and we'll make a photocopy and which you can authenticate as the we have seen the, seen the original. Because sometimes they can be seeing somebody else in the future so you can hold that. Because this is a clear example that whoever said it on an oath, they lie and they should be subject for perjury. That's number one. So I'm glad you're happy you came. The second thing, every statement here is recorded for posterity as well as the radio station and TV carrying it. Mr. Former Vice, former Vice President, and in fact, former President for a few months, and former Vice President, Black came and he testified. He also talked about arrest. I, I do not have right now, but I'll look in my hearings on my, to see whether when he said he was arrested, whether he told us on an oath that he was in your house. For 13 days. Yeah. Thank God you came for the process, truth seeking, and truth searching process because you've told us that. So when we write the history, we'll be able to tell the truth, and I'm sure we'll review his statement and see whether he said that. Then we'll know whether he told us everything that he should have. Second, another thing, they talk about two men, Faye and Yomi, John Yomi, right? They were the wives. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You said there were how many who came there? There are four. Four women four who came. Three women, three women. Three and, women. Uh, and one, one of my friends. And one of your but friends. They, they are still living. He lives at Sokine there. Okay, yes. Because one lady, one of the widows came and testified. I want to know, this John Yomi, is that the same John Yomi who we saw over TV that were happy to cut off former president here? Is that the same person they're referring to? Well, I, 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 I do believe because he was with uh, Prince Johnson. Uh, he came from the Prince Johnson. So in fact, this is the John Yomi that was a police director during the uh, Soyo government. I knew him, a personal friend of mine, uh, before it's missing before his uh, a missing action. It's a personal friend of mine. I mean, this is the John Yomi, our police director. So, what was the position of uh, if that was the same man who we saw what V. Cotton, the former president of Liberia, commander in chief here, or what did he hold position in the succeeding government? If, uh, do you know? I during the administration, if I'm not mistaken, he was deputy, deputy minister for national security. Deputy minister of operation for national security. Oh, deputy minister for national security. Yes. Okay. Oh, all right. Because I didn't know. Let the record. I was not sure that was the same person. But okay. Yes, they said that's the same person. So thank you for clarifying that. Cause I didn't know okay. who he was. Who the John Yomi they were referring to. But now. That, also, the widow testified, and she, she said, I mean, one of the V's widow testified. Mm -hmm. And she, just as you heard about the watch and a cell phone. But now, by telling us, we can understand, I mean, I can understand, and those with the facts now, why you were sitting there, and why you couldn't get up at that time, because anybody reasonably would know that under the circumstances and situation, you have a mining, you know, someone who now we can appreciate that at least they live to tell the story. And I'm sure they're living to hear your side of the story. I hope. Okay. 
I want to say thank you. Let, let me find out. Uh, do they talk about wash or foam? Yeah, I know. They say foam we look in there, but even if a foam, I, this is yeah, my, I, my foam here. I have this color foam. Mm -hmm. I see the travel. One of these travel got the same color foam. My other securities have the foam. So the color of a foam or so from a distance, we can into consideration yeah, I, whether or not you know we can make our own judgment on that all right i want to say thank you for coming and you said that you all came in from uh Aricos or guinea yeah the only testimony of former now senator prince johnson prince y johnson he gave the impression that and even blah he gave the impression that people were to come with Charles Taylor command, but certain people came in front, including Prince Johnson himself. And apparently, people had a change of mind that he broke away from the the MPF and became I N P F L. So when they enter in, in into uh, what you call it, Nima? Nima, yes. There was a split. There were one group who for Taylor were behind, and another group came in front, and Prince Johnson became the king, king pinger. Anyway, which group were you with? You were with Prince Johnson, or you were with the other group who were coming in? No, I, I was not with Prince Johnson. Okay. Prince Johnson was ordered arrest. Order came from where the rebel leader was sitting that Prince Johnson should be arrested okay and uh, for violating the rule and regulation that, that governed the MPFL at the time but uh, it was not stick clearly what kind of rule he violated okay and Prince Johnson heard that he got out another group they left okay. so we decided not to go with him and uh, we remain so I think Prince Johnson been here you could have better explain what caused him to break away from MPFL? Now, I called, that gave me a knee, I MPFL, and this and that. You could better explain. Yes, uh, he did say it, and I just wanted to know who was some of the those who were with him and which side you were on for uh, clarity. Uh, just like Chick said, my colleague and old sage in this business, that he said, if, if we can understand, if many of the people, in fact, that was the trend and the order they did from 1980, people who had friends saved their friends, and those who thought somebody had done something to them or so called their names, and that's how others were killed or went to jail. And in fact, those who didn't even know people, once they knew people had authority, it was who you know will get you there or get you out. So that was part of the pattern that what happened. But uh, we will take note to find out whether that praise or that gratitude or that information was given to us by President Blah. Okay. Th thank you very much for also clarifying yes. to us that it was from your ear the best evidence that Mr. Taylor, the Commander-in-Chief then and President of Liberia, instructed you yes. to tell Benjamin Yeten to release everyone was who was in jail that were connected with the black incident. Yes. And also you gave us the information that Blah told you what the people said Whatever, whatever foreign interest said, and what he talked to Randall Cooper, and what Randall Cooper told him to tell them. Madam President, Madam Commissioner, not not Blah told me, but he told the leader in my president. He told the president. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Blah. In his statement, he told the president what the people told him, and what the role Randall Cooper played. So Randall Cooper yeah. hasn't come. He wanted those who we asked to come. So we hope they all can come because now we understand because like some we are we are we didn't know he was in jail or he was involved. So we hope all of them listening to you will see the wisdom to come to exonerate themselves 
to accept as an and admit their participation or yes and I say deny allegations because everyone who we call in sight we not just sit now thinking oh yes the person was so and so we have information on them you see all the questions they were asking you each one that somebody said it we got it on file we got it data we got a number we got a name and everything so we not just wish hunting because we don't know someone your the first time meeting someone you are you know so thank you got no fish to fry except to do our work but we can't really do our work if the people of Liberia, the victims, the survivor, the people of interest, the alleged perpetrators or wrongdoers, or the saviors and rescuers don't come to give us the true story. Thank you for participating, for making this, you made sacrifices all through, and for making sacrifice this day. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, thank you, Mr. Witness, for coming. Um, one or two questions. The first is that you said um, during the incident at the Episcopal Church, you were not in Liberia. Madam Commissioner, please hold it, I, 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 I'm a fighter. I've been a fighting with a heavy weapon before. I'm not too so, shot. So, your ear. so hold your mic closer. Are close to the mic. Okay, go ahead. You can, can hear, hear me you now? now? I can hear you. Okay. You said during the incident at the Episcopal Church, um, September 18, 1998, you were out of Liberia. You left um, on the 22nd of August, August. But I did not hear when you came back. When I, did you come back to Liberia? I, I explained it. I, I left Liberia on the 22nd of August. In fact, spring on uh, August 24th in Cote d'Ivoire, Arico, to be specific, Abidjan. That very evening, I took off. I landed in Liberia August 20th, and what do you call October 21st. When? October 20, 21st, I entered Liberia. It's October. all written on my passport. October 21st, okay, I 1998. Thank you. Okay. Um, do you know um, one Sokwe? Who? Sokwe? Yeah, that name is, it's not, I call it Zogwe. I don't know whether oh, it's Zogwe. Yeah. Yeah, Zogwe. No, you know that, that native name, so okay. we're not pronouncing it, it, it the right way. It's a police of mine. Police what? He's a colleague of mine. He's a he's a he's a special police officer. Oh, of, he's your colleague. Of a MP of a, yeah, my colleague. And John Tier. Yes. Did you fight along with them and uh, during the war? Yes. Were you all fighting together? Okay. Yeah. Um, you were all part of the same team. Yes, uh, but we were on a separate unit. Okay. I control a fear artillery. Fear artillery means that's a weapon that when it is stuck at the battle phone call upon you to go and help them uh, with. They were all unit commanders at the time. So they used to call you to help them? Of course, when okay. they are stuck or somewhere. Um, do you know any yellow jacket? No. No yellow jacket? No. Okay. Um, do you know any junior Fania? Yes, I know one junior from here. Leo uh, Jeb. Hmm? Leo Jeb. Leo who? Leo Jebo. Leo Jebo, exactly. When I explained here today that I, after I came out with a special, uh, what do you call uh, SSU, and when the structure was set, the structure here was Leo Jebo. And okay, uh, you could okay. not uh, agree with me that I had to resign. So you resign. Mm. And Saboli? Yes. Joe Tua? Oh, yourself. Um, sorry, General Eric Sway? No, I, 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 I knew Eric Sway as a 
a member from AFSI, but I don't know him personally. But uh, we have been together. But I know all the other you've been calling. You are with AFL? Yes. And then he joined the MPFL? Yes, but... Uh, okay. So he was a recruit from the AFL? Mm -hmm. Okay. Arthur Sa? Yes. And then Benedict Menti? Benedict who? Menti. No, I don't know him. You don't know him. Uh, but did you at any time fight alongside these people also during the war? Yeah, you see the fighting, those are, most of them you've been calling beside uh, John Tier and uh, Zogwe, most of them you've been calling, uh, calling, we consider them as junior commando those days. Uh, it's not that they belong in unit, but uh, we were somehow popular because uh, we were special forces. Some of them used to explain themselves, but uh, I was not fighting directly on an infantry war, maybe you may not understand infantry war, the small uh, rapper war until it come to uh, a terrible war. So I know them, but I, I had no direct uh, contact with them, more especially on the land of uh, battlefront. Okay. Fighting. You knew them? Yeah. Okay. Edward T. Zame. Edward T. Zame, also uh, my colleague, special forces colleague. Okay. What was his position? What was the what? His position. He is normal. Of course, all of us sitting have body of women, but he is normal. Huh? He is normal. In fact, he served AFL lastly as MP commander. No. What did he serve MPFL as? Oh, he said what was the position? Yeah, his oh, position. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I, he was one of the uh, battalion commander all the way to uh, Chief of Staff. I have a one Wallace. One who? Wallace. Wallier? Wallace. No. Or oh, Wallace. Wallace. Mainstream, I don't know. Okay. Osibo Dime. <laughs> Maybe I'm not pronouncing the name properly. Osibo was uh, CPS. CPS? I, 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 Chief protected service of our SSS. He was directly under the assistant director, mainly for the protection of the burden in SSS. I know him. Okay. Matthew Khan. Matthew? Khan. No. Um, Felix Philip Do. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. I just wanted you to verify that you knew these people. That's the reason why I asked. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. One last question. <clears throat> Can you tell us about the SSU? The SSU? The SSU, the structure of the SSU. Well, I told you earlier, <clears throat> SSS had a director that report directly to the uh, to the president and they had the uh, administrative wing that uh, the book administrative wing is headed by deputy for administration responsible for all documentation in the office had of a, a branch on a hand called the secretary pool and he had an assistant director for administration, also the uh, assistant director for intelligence, report a minor issue to him, but a very serious issue report to the director of the panel. Then we had a deputy director for operation that is mainly responsible for the protection of the uh, the uh, executive, chief executive, and we had deputy for operation, also four under the deputy for operation. We had a training department responsible for training, deputy director for training, and so on. In 1998, who was the head of the SSU? I told you earlier, during my time with SSS, 
Benjamin Yeten was the uh, director of SSS. SSU and SSS are the same thing? Oh, you say SSU? Yeah, SSU. SSU was the long uh, iron unit of SSS. I, for not order, because that was for soldiers not to be at the action, SSU was a uh, thing. Uh, it later on became ATU. But uh, the commander at the time was Leo Tebo. Prior to, prior to uh, going to uh, ATU, later on they incorporated them with ATU. Okay, thank you. Then lastly, there was. Yes. <coughs> uh, thank you very much. Yeah, you said I think. I want to just ask a last question, that's why. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Uh, instruction was given to, I don't know whether it was a rest or what, of uh, Sam Bukhari. And then you explained that later on, you all saw the dead body of Sam Bukhari in the vehicle of Benjamin Yetin. My question is, what was the instruction? Was it to arrest him and bring him down to Morovia? Was to have him eliminated to arrest. The instruction given to me is to join. At the time, Ganta was on a battle, and uh, the SSS director, later deputy chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff, was commanding a Ganta troop, uh, Benjamin. They told me to join him and uh, have Saint Bogari arrested. He was wanted by. A civilian worker coat. So I, when I got to Ganta late hour that night, too late, Ben has already proceeded there. So the order is to arrest him. But uh, unfortunately, when he said he refused an arrest, so uh, there was a string of bullet and he died. And body was coming. Okay, thank you very much. Do you have anything finally to say before you? <laughs> There's one last question. You emphasize very clearly that you were artillery commander. Huh? As artillery commander. Yes, artillery field commander. Artillery field commander. Yes. Can you tell us the function of the artillery field commander? Yes, I. Artillery is responsible for artillery is a, a terrible weapon. It is a, a heavy weapon on the battlefield. I told you earlier in my deliberation that uh, we had two groups of artillery when we decided to uh, advance. We had the advanced artillery. First of all, the field artillery are a certain weapon, a certain heavy weapon. Uh, one who say caravan, etc. This is the unit that was commanding. But the van and terrible was uh, a missile and some other long range weapon. So a terrible melee is for for a certain heavy a certain weapon. Yeah, terrible. So you were in charge of long range assault? Yes, I I took over I was executive, but took over in the same 1990 in uh, December, and I remained a commander up to the disarmament in '96. Was that the same position held by Martina Johnson? Hmm? Was that the same position held by Martina Johnson? Yeah, Martina Johnson had uh, control the advance, etc. Okay. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, okay. Thank you. Were you still holding that position up to auto post? And did you take part in auto post? Come back again. You said you was artillery commander from 1990 to 1996. Yes. My question is, did you take part in the auto post attack? Yeah. And you were still doing the same artillery job. Yeah, I, I, I think you can see within the 
in between the Ottawa War, I was 93. If I can serve in unit from 1990 to 2003, I fought the uh, Ottawa War. You were among those who were trained the missiles on Monrovia? I was not responsible for Mr. Uh, Commissioner. I told you earlier that I was responsible for the weapon to a sort on the main battlefront. I was not responsible for long range. Yeah, well, and I told you who were commanding the long range. The long range that you were responsible, did you put into practice during auto post? Yes, I fought with it. You think I was giving weapon and let me use that again. <laughs> okay. Your last word, if you have any. <clears throat> yes, I, I want to uh, also thank the commissioner for devoting your time up to this hour. I, I have been fighting to, uh, to appear before TLC. But I, I was waiting for a time. I thought, after gathering your information from wherever it came from, you were going to write out individually. This is why it took long to be here. But unfortunately for me, when I was on my business tour in uh, Southeastern, while we're here, there's transformation already going on. I, I can leave from here and spend about money in, in, in Zedru. And I think those are your, the Liberians believe that the war has been between the Nima and the, and the Crown people, or the Grandinian. But we are already carrying our transformation. So I, I heard that we were wanted by TLC. I don't know how can that be when we were all waiting for the time. But uh, God could work it off. We are coming here today because there are a lot of rumors and we are not come to clarify it. It was going to be terrible. Some of us had uh, official ambition. I, I, I don't want to uh, come out here and this and this and this that. But uh, I will say again, uh, we say never mind to do the height. Uh, there is no way that somebody will be harassed or intimidated, what happened in Nima County, uh, it was almost going to what they call ethnic cleansing. I, I listened to one of the commissioners here today say when the, uh, the, country, uh, the country was normal. Yes, it, it may be normal in Birmingham, but not normal in Nima County at the time. So uh, in terms of uh, redeeming the order, all of uh, myself sitting here, Lord, my, my only brother in the war. So war affected everybody. We say sorry. And uh, I think hearing my voice on air today will clear the doubt from Liberian people. I came in this country mainly to redeem the Nimbayan. So I can't be the, the person uh, that I came to redeem to kill them. No. I said earlier, those floating statements. Those who made it, they could have received a lot of questions here to come out with people who, who kill their own brothers. But uh, however, I thank you all and also thank myself for coming. Thank you. Um, do you still live in Sinko? Or did you at any time live in Sinko? Yeah. So I live in Congo Town. I have my own house in Congo Town. In Congo Town? Yes. But is there a shop in Sinko where you normally go to? Shop? Where is there a shop near my area? In Sinko. Where I have shop in Sinko? Yeah, where you go to right now? No, no, no. The business I'm doing is out of town business. Well, you see, that was the only information the TRC had on your whereabouts. Nobody could see it. The only information was that you were in Sinko and you were at the University of Liberia. And for months, the TRC tried. And so with no information, no calling, even though you had a desire to come to the commission, but you didn't make contact with the commission, we had to inform you indirectly that it would be good if you come. That's why we did it. Anyway, we are happy that we have come to this point. Okay. You have come and shared your experience. You responded to all the questions and the issues we have. And I think it has served our purpose well. We thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Okay, sir. You may kindly leave with the thanks of the commission.
Akad ibn Lifya. Kamu, kamu, 